No Democratic woman had won a seat in the United States Senate in her own right, and that was only 28 years ago. You know, and in that time, Emily's List has helped elect 19 women to the United States Senate, 101 women to the House, 10 governors, including a great governor right here in Texas, uh, former uh, or late Ann Richards, who we all miss dearly. Uh, so that has been our mission. But in a country that is that has a Congress that is only eh, at best 19 percent women, in a country where 24 states still have not le elected women governors, never mind partisan, women governors, 24 states, and a country that has not elected a woman president yet. We have a lot of uphill battles, but we're winning them one at a time, and we see the opportunities here in Texas. Someone like Senator Davis is exactly what we're looking for nationally when we're looking for women to sit down at the kitchen table and say, okay, what are you thinking? When, when can we get you to run for, for higher office? We'd like to see her take something on uh, in the years to come. She's doing such a great job representing her, her district as a state senator, and she needs to do that. Uh, but we are certainly hoping that she, she thinks seriously about taking on either a statewide opportunity or, or something higher office. I'm going to talk about the gender piece first, which is I think this movement is going to be led by women here in Texas and women from all different backgrounds, particularly Latinas. And so that's where we see a lot, a lot of growth. And on the matter of reproductive rights, I think what is going on in the Texas legislature, which is clearly controlled uh, entirely by the Republicans, is that this extreme behavior on matters of women's health care from one bill to the next to the next is awakening women and quite frankly men across the state going whoa this is way too far well we got to go to the ground we got to get folks here in texas texans to to guide us and we've got you know a lot of great supporters who are more than willing to pick up the phone and and give me the advice and counsel i need as we're recruiting uh, for candidates here as we're looking at where we're going to support, where we're going to put resources, and as we grow our membership. Every state is different. Some are more unique than others, and Texas, in a good way, would fall in that category. You know, we really, at Emily's List, wanted to lay out a case and start, out, start a national conversation about the importance of breaking through that last and biggest glass ceiling, the White House. And in that, we've seen great energy already in these last two weeks, and it's a conversation I'd like to have here in Texas and, uh, and around the country, because truth is, it's, it's time. I, I do believe that the key are going to be women. Now, your, your women across the state and women everywhere tend to be more moderate, even if they are Republicans, they are landing more on the moderate side of the partisan scale. I think those are the folks that we have to have conversations with across, across the state of Texas and talk about where, where the state is headed and is that where you want the state to head on issues of health care, education, child care, I mean issues that are really, really important to families in the state. like so many Democrats across the country and right here in Texas. I mean, we really think this is going to happen. I think it's going to take a few years to get there, but with demographic changes, which are significant here in Texas, I mean, those of us who don't live in Texas find it hard to even get our heads around that there's four new congressional districts in Texas alone. But it's that demographic growth of young folks, Hispanics, and that is a huge change, a change of, of directions usually in partisan politics.